Hey there, community. Jason Rahm here for Dev Central, and I wanted to record a follow-up to last Thursday's Coding Live segment, and I thought since I'm already uh, going to record it, I might as well do this live. So if you're with me uh, for the live session, thank you uh, on such short notice uh, for joining me. And if you're catching this on the replay, uh, then you know you can uh, follow up last Thursday's uh, live stream with with this final solution. We'll walk through that here in a second. Uh, before we get to that, just wanted to remind you, uh, tomorrow, Boo has Sebastian Maniac um, on the regular Dev Central Connects, 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday. And Sebastian always has a lot of great things to say. Make sure you tune in for that. And then Aubrey and I are kicking off a series on uh, building it live. We're just going to start building some solutions. And we're going to start with infrastructure, and then we're going to build an app then we're going to deploy an app, then we're going to publish an app, then we're going to protect an app, and then see where we go from there. And so at least four episodes, maybe more, who knows, but uh, join us for that. And that's going to be uh, Wednesday at 1.30 Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday for that show. And of course, Microservices March is coming up. We're only, what is it, 17 days away? No, 15 days away. 16 days away from March 1st. Uh, I can do I can do the maths. Uh, so we're 16 days away from uh, from March, and then that kicks off a whole month of Nginx goodies. And so you want to make sure you tune in in March. I'll be doing the the lab that they kick off every week for that that particular week's content. I'll be doing that live on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Pacific, and so we'll have those details down the road. Uh, but just want to make uh, uh, sure that you know that that's coming. And uh, okay, so let's let's do a, a screen share here, and let's talk about uh, the the setup. It's just a big IP and a test box. The text bot the test box is client and server. I'm just looping one network to the big IP, and then the server sides on on the other interface of of my test box, and it's just an nginx server running and 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 giving back default content. That's not what we care about. What we care about is the 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 um uh, the TLS setup on big IP and I don't know that I showed it last time maybe I did uh, but the TLS group we want to come in here and we want to make sure that we're allowing uh, TLS 1.3 in this particular scenario I know we already can do packet captures for TLS 1.2 and down there were some uh, specific scenarios in which to enable, uh, TLS 1.3, and there's a, a database key that you have to do to enable uh, TLS 1.3, and then you actually have to enable the the Cipher Suites uh, in in a Cipher rule. So you know Cipher Suites TLS v1 underscore three, uh, you can use the defaults for those, and those get picked up, and then you apply that uh, Cipher group once you so you create the rule, and then you create a group to apply that rule. And then over in your profile, let's go over to the SSL. I created one for my test VIP. And not only do I have the certificate uh, keychains, but down here, uh, I think it's not showing because I'm on basic. Then down here in the ciphers, uh, I established this cipher group uh, applied. So it should speak TLS 1.3. And we can verify that down here if I come over two here, if I'm only going to use uh, TLS uh, 1.3, then I can see that that is, um, you know, uh, because the big IP only allows TLS 3, this should fail if curl isn't, you know, have it, it doesn't support TLS 1.3. However, it does, you can see down here, we're welcome to Nginx. So we're working. The, the, the scenario, the situation is working. Where we got on Thursday is we were, we were customizing the code that we had for everything TLS 1.2 and down. And so I was taking that solution and stripping everything in there that we didn't need. The old solution relied on iRules to pull those keys out of the sessions between client and server. On my solution, we're only looking at the client side, uh, but if you are encrypting on the server side, it would pull that out too. And so the iRules uh, pulled those keys out, stored them, or I mean, uh, logged them to uh, varlog LTM. And then we had uh, some utilities on the big IP that would, uh, would, would decrypt those, I'm sorry, would, would take those keys out of the, the log files and put them in a file 
and then uh, the script would then pull down the TLS. I'm mean, sorry, the um, uh, the packet capture and the key file, and then locally on your wherever you're running your script from would apply that key file uh, to the TCP dump, create a new cap file that uh, was decrypted. So all that existed before our session on Thursday, except for the TLS 1.3 scenario. And so we got as far as uh, pulling those files off, taking the packet capture, um, but we were having, I was having some trouble getting the, uh, the pipe to work in, uh, in the, the process of getting T shark, uh, to pipe the output of those session keys to its own file using said. And, and so this is where we got stuck and I wanted to share just the, the process of that, then the TCP dump, and then I'll, I'll do a quick demo and we'll be out of here. But uh, extracting the keys, we pass the TCB dump file. We have a T Shark process, uh, and that's using Python sub process. And I'm going to read the TCB dump file, and then I'm going to look at the Ethernet trailer. Uh, that's my display filter. So if it doesn't, if it's not a packet that has a uh, an F5 Ethernet tra or e trailer in the in the packet capture, so you you don't, haven't enabled that in your capture, then it's not even going to look at that. And then it's going to look at uh, it's going to put it into fields uh, separated um, by, uh, it, yeah, it's going to pull it out and separate it by comma. And then it's it's actually going to look at the fields that are specific in the uh, in the capture. And in this case, we want the TLS key log. So if it doesn't have a TLS key log, it's not going to it's not going to um, it's not going to read that out uh, in display. And so where we were stuck before is we were just taking that standard out and reading it. In this case, because we want to pass that to said, we need to create a subprocess.pipe to standard out. And then I use that subprocess uh, of said to read that input from this process, pass it to said. So we're piping, and then I'm reading it in the second process. So that took a little while to figure out uh, the nuances of how to use a uh, subprocess in Python. It worked out fine. In the original command, we were then piping that uh, or redirecting all of that uh, work that said did then into a file. Rather than try to do that through another pipe in subprocess, we can just handle that natively in Python. So it created a, 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 a key, uh, a key file. And then as that uh, came out, then the standard out, I'm just passing that to the key file. Uh, thankfully, subprocess supports that as well. And then close out the key, and the key file extraction is done. So then we didn't really have to do any changes to the decrypt capture because in the original solution, I had a key file, I had a, a TCP dump file. I you know put those together with edit cap, and edit cap does its thing, creates the uh, the decrypted file, and that it did that here. And so I didn't really have to change that. The only thing I had to change was the capture of the TCP dump itself because we pulled all the I rules out. We were not applying I rules. I don't have to search the profiles to make sure what kind of I rule I needed to apply. All that was simplified, pulled out. Great. The one thing that we did have to do is because when you're going to push the, the session keys into your TCP dump file, you need to activate a, a database key for that. And so that's where, um, yeah, let's see, here it is. Yeah, so rather than put that into the specific function, we kind of talked about, you know, Python best practices, like make make your functions do kind of one thing. And so originally I was going to put it in this run TCP dump. Instead, I just created a separate function for that to toggle that SSL provider. And so it just passed the big IP object to be able to make those changes via I control rest and then the state that I want it to be. And so we have the um, uh, that that operation against uh, sysdb tcp dump dot ssl provider that database key in i control rest it's a it's a patch function so in the particular python library that i use which is big rest it's a modify op uh, operation and then i just pass enable or disable and so then because i'd put that there this didn't need to change the 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 um the function itself did not need to change. The only thing I had to change was the uh, TCP dump bash string here at the top of the file. So I had to add the dash f dash dash f5 SSL colon v, 
and adding that in with the the database keys enabled um, allows you to then get those session keys into the uh, in into the the packet capture. And so with that, you download the packet capture only. That's the only file I have to to download. And then again, you extract the keys and then decrypt the capture and you're good to go. So process wise, the other thing that, that hung me up, I was on Thursday, I was, I was fighting with this a little bit. It's like, can't find the file. Why can't it find the file? File management is a super simple thing in Python. What happened was when I created the function, I wasn't really thinking about order. I created it from my process flow down here and my extract keys was above download files. So I, I really don't have a TCP dump file to uh, extract keys from if I haven't downloaded the file yet. And uh, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that that one took me a little while to find out uh, or to, to figure out. So, but that was on Thursday. And so I just walked away and didn't look at it Friday because I had some other priorities to look at and then came back um, this morning. And, and it was like, you know, a couple, couple minutes really. And so, you know, that's one of the things like you get stuck on a problem, sometimes just walk away, leave it. And if it's not like a high priority thing, which this isn't, um, it's uh, something you can come back to. Uh, but anyway, so let's do a quick demo and and then we'll get out of here. So here I've got my Python, I'm gonna run that file and then it's gonna ask me for my virtual name. This is the virtual under test. And then I wanna capture for 10 seconds here. And capture file uh, or capture filters. So it's gonna do the host of that virtual uh, anyway, cause it's gonna look up the, the IP of that virtual server and it's gonna apply that in the capture. If you see up here at the top, in the TCP dump string, this virtual IP, when you do the run the TCP dump capture, it's gonna pull out virtual IP and put in host and the actual virtual IP. But then if you want to do any kind of a, uh, a filter, it's gonna, it's gonna put the filters in there as well. So in this case, we can just do and uh, port 443. And so now it's starting the TCP dump. So we can come over here and we can run some test traffic Okay, and if we come back, that should end here in a second or two. And it did. And so now we get a nice little talking list here of what was created and what was removed. So on the big IP, this was created, but then deleted after it was downloaded. And then we got an extracted key file and it created that. So before in the original solution, it downloaded all of that stuff. Here, we're creating it on the local side, so it's less the big IP system has to do, which is good. And then uh, the other important thing here is uh, we, uh, let's see, uh, the database key has been disabled, continuing up here, we've enabled it, right? Oh, I got the spacing issue there, I gotta solve. Um, that isn't over like it should be, but that's just the formatting issue. Uh, the database key has been enabled, that's good. Uh, this is a, a really critical one. You've taken your TCP dump, uh, the database key has been disabled, that's the key. You don't wanna leave that on uh, when you don't need it because otherwise you could have captures with keys and, and uh, chaos and you wanna make sure you're protecting your stuff. Okay, anyway, that ran. So now we see we have session keys, uh, PMS that, and we see all of our session keys stored in the file, which is great. And then we have our encrypted file and our decrypted file. So if we come over here to Wireshark and we open our one that we downloaded from the big IP, we can see that the we have the client hello and we see some application data in here. But what we don't see is decrypted stuff. We we see on the on the server side here. So my my networks, the 101 is the client side, the two the 102 is the server side. You can see we're decrypted on the on the server side, uh, but we're still encrypted on the other on the on the client side, and and that was expected because that is that hasn't been decrypted yet. And what you can do in Wireshark if you don't want to automate it, and this is a this is the whole process, the whole reason I built this thing is to automate a lot of this stuff. You don't have to go through all the menus to apply that file, and then have it decrypted. Um, so if we open the one that we created to be decrypted with the keys. Then there we go, 101, there's our get. And even down here, you can say decrypted TLS. You can see that uh, Wireshark knows that that has been uh, decrypted from the original file. So 
anyway, that that's what that's what we did. That that is uh, going to be another tool in in the PCAP underscore utils out of my F5 dash JROM uh, GitHub user. I'll I'll publish that out. Those all those notes will be on the Dev Central Connects group on community.f5.com. And I'll have a bunch of resources in solutions from the, you know, the Ask F5 side as well. And I don't know if I've got those linked on the side. Nope, they're not over here. But we, we I'll put those all those notes so that you can either customize this tool, use it as is, uh, build out your own solutions. But there's a, a lot you can do to automate the uh, the boring stuff. And certainly taking packet captures and, and the, the manual steps and all that. It can be cumbersome, easy to make mistakes, and automating it uh, takes all the guesswork out and, and and a lot of the just the, the manual grunt work. You can focus on other things. So with that, thank you for joining me in this uh, this follow up to last Thursday's session. Since we didn't solve it there, wanted to make sure I followed up and, and we got it solved here. If you have any questions on this or anything else, you can hit me up on on Dev Central and send me a direct message or you can hit uh, send me an email anything and we're we, we love being a part of the community we love bringing content like this to you if it's helpful give us a like uh, subscribe and uh, for pop-up shows like this that i think we're going to start doing more often that uh, you know we we will certainly have our promoted shows but we we might do more shows that that we're, we're just going to pop up and start coding stuff and and if if that's of interest make sure you turn on your notifications you subscribe and we will see you out there in the community. Thanks so much for joining me on this uh, Monday evening. Uh, at least for me, it's a Monday evening. So take care, everyone. Enjoy.